Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. All right. Uh, welcome back to Bloodstained Curse of the Moon 2. Um, for some reason, I have never gone back to play this game. I always said that I would, but I am now. You're in luck. Um, you can see that I've got some authentically spooky makeup on. I know it's not Halloween, but I'm actually playing with a controller as well. All right. Okay. Oh yeah, I'm wearing a, uh, a vest as well. That's neat. Okay. So... This game is weird, but... I'm gonna play casual because I'm a baby. Uh, this game's a little weird, but we'll get to that. Zangetsu, the peerless swordsman from the east, crossed paths with fellow travelers on his quest for revenge. They overcame perilous battles and forged deep bonds, ultimately working together to strike down the demonic threat they pursued. However, the journey was not yet complete. Dominique, an exorcist sent by the church, who has who was sworn to revenge against demon kind, spread word of a tower of unknown origins. It is said to be constructed using methods once thought impossible for man to achieve. It was known to the church as the Demon Tower, as if called forth by the tower itself. The demon's castle appeared once again, as you do. Is this a curse or fate, or a whim of the moon? Zangetsu's blade flashed in the moonlight once more as the demon's stronghold beckoned. Oh yeah, I painted my nails as well. At least the important ones. <laughs> oh, it looks so silly on that little glider. All right. Okay. So, for those who are just joining us, way back in the 80s, Konami had this game called Castlevania. And it was really good. Let it be known. Um, but over time, Castlevania, the game, started to evolve and change. Ooh, there was one there. Um, until it became a new genre known as Metroidvania which we know today. Technically things like um, Dark Souls count. I really don't think that they should, but technically they do. Um, the recent God of War was actually a really, really good classic example of a Metroidvania. Because you're constantly getting new upgrades and abilities and items that let you do new mini games and stuff. Uh, yeah, the two new God of Wars, that is. Right, gotta crap with these. Um. Ordinarily, that would knock me back, but I'm playing on baby mode. Whoops. Sorry, I'm trying to talk and remember all my controls. That's one death, though. Whoops. So anyway, yeah. Um, anyway, this dude who goes by Iga, I think his name is Hoji Igarashi, if I remember right. Message is written in blood. It seems I can use sub-weapons with the Y button. It would require weapon points. If I destroy lamps, perhaps I could find a magic potion to restore these weapon points. I also find different cover lands that contain different sub-weapons. Word. Yeah. 
Uh, anyway. I mean, let me, let me... So anyway, Koji Igarashi made this game called Symphony of the Night, which is actually my desktop background. The box art of the Japanese version of Symphony of the Night is my desktop background because it just looks so good. I can save it. Um, and he, they made a bunch of games like that. You know, there was a lot of reused assets. There was a lot of similar plot stuff. You know, like... Oh, your friend is now a... Uh, oops, uh, your friend is now controlled by demons, and he's a boss. There's a girl in the castle. You know, stuff like that. They all would share a lot of DNA with each other. Oh, good thing I'm on easy mode. Yeah, let's take it. Making sure I have one. Too early. That's my fault. Oh yeah, hearts are actually health in this game, I forgot. So anyway, for those who don't know, Castlevania eventually suffered an extreme amount of mismanagement by its owner company, Konami. Um, yeah, they suffered a lot of just straight up problems. Yeah. We fight smart here. Um, and it eventually kind of caused a sort of death of classic Castlevania. Um, and technically it does survive in some form. Uh, because Konami will keep re-releasing all those games because they were awesome and they made a bajillion dollars. Oh yeah. They made a bajillion dollars. Um, but the thing is that we will not get new ones. The last Castlevania games were... But yeah, the last Castlevania games were in the reboot timeline, which is not as well liked. Um, I actually played the first game a couple of months ago, and it took me a while. Sorry about that. Um, and then the other way that we're getting new Castlevania content is that occasionally they will release new seasons of the Castlevania anime. The first two were actually very high quality, though. Alright, two is too much. Oh, you can hit him when the mouth is open. Okay. So just whenever the mouth is open. Gotcha. Oh, that would be a thing for if I had the, uh... That would be a thing for if I had the, uh... Sorry, I'm blanking. It's the holy water, technically. Right this. <laughs> So, um, in their infinite wisdom, Konami actually fired Iga, even though he made them all those great games. And they said, no, you can't make any more. We'll get other guys to do it. 
Iga, however, actually likes making Castlevania, and he rewrote a bunch of the games, and he did so much for it. You're too slow, Zangetsu. I fell the target before you. You have some nerve using me as a decoy. Come on, I had no choice. You were the only person I could rely on for this. Let me lend you my strength, and we will slay those demons together. I have faith in you, Zangetsu. <laughs> Dominique has become an ally. All right. Spear strike, high jump, vertical strike. And we can DuckTales. And then we can do this. Um, so anyway, Iga in the Grand Tradition got on Kickstarter and he said, hey, I'll make a new Castlevania if you guys give me some cash money, yo. And they said, oh, we would love that, Mr. Ega. And Bloodstain became one of the most, like, this one. Bloodstain became, uh, became one of the most funded Kickstarters of all time because it's like, hey, I'm the, I'm the Symphony of the Night guy. Would you ever like a new Symphony of the Night? This can happen if you give me money. Sorry, focusing in on this level. So it is possible for us to go this way. And this is actually what the skeleton guy will recommend. But if you have the right character, you can go that way. I think you need, um, what's his name's bomb attack? Um, but yeah, you can see that already there was stuff in the last level that we could never have gotten. Uh, because we needed a bigger jump. Oh, right, doi. Sorry. This vine is stairs. Don't mind me, everyone. So we actually have not lost a life. That doesn't count as a one-up. Dominique is just uh, out of commission until we end up losing that life. Now this can be bad because we might need her for stuff, but that's okay. Oh, no. Ordinarily, you try to get uh, score and points in the base game in order to get extra lives, but obviously that's less important in this one. So anyway, Iga um, put out you know, his big Kickstarter. And they were like, oh man, Ego, we're huge fans. We would love to make this game for you. But the thing is, is that the development of the game was taking so long, that if we could jump up there, we would need Dominique. So we cannot go this way. Uh, the development of the game was taking so long that eventually they were like, what if we just put together a, a very short, very sweet game that was just really hard? Because the Castlevania games uh, that were like Symphony of the Night were rather famously not very difficult. Damn. Uh, yeah, the Castlevania games that were like Sodden were famously not particularly difficult. Some of them had some moments of high difficulty, but... Oh right, it's not her jump. Don't mind me, everyone. Yeah, you can see that her up, up stab is useful for uh, fighting guys on floors above you. I think she has a lower attack damage though. It doesn't uh, matter too much. Word. You can see that she actually has less health as well.
Um, sorry, I'm trying to think, but nothing's happening. So anyway, uh, Iga's team put together a little NES-inspired classic game that was a lot more like, you know, the other Castlevanias. Yeah. You know, like NES Castlevania, which I've also actually played. I had to cheat my way through it, but that's okay. I also played Castlevania 2, which is not as good. I'd use a little bit of uh, cheats in that, just for the sake of my own sanity. All right, cool. Went through relatively unscathed. So that's her little ducktails there. Um. So yeah, the team put together Curse of the Moon 1. And initially that was going to be the first Bloodstained game. But the thing is, is that in a weird way, it ended up being non-canon. Which is weird, because the whole point of it was that it was just a little sizzle before the actual game came out. Uh, and yet, it just isn't canon. But there's a lot of interesting things in that game that are not in any of the other games. For example, the party that you have. Uh, you can choose to, like kill them. And when you kill them, instead of them joining the party, Zangatsu will gain their power, or a form of their power. Which can actually really mix up the way that you play. Sorry, trying to get fancy on him. Still caught me. Resurrection Anthem, a sub-weapon that disappears once, revives all allies, and restores health. So yeah, that's a rare one. It's useful for, again, when you have uh, no lives. And that's how you're getting through. Anyway, Curse of the Moon actually sold really well. Um, and it was a lot simpler. And, you know, if you were somebody who didn't like... If you were someone who did not like, uh, you know, Sodden and you wanted something more akin to the classics... Word. If you didn't like Sodden as much and you wanted something more like the classics, then Curse of the Moon 1 was just that. It was it was one of the classics, really. It just had a little bit more glitz and glamour on it that you really couldn't have gotten in the, you know, NES era. But that's fine. I love this enemy's design. 